Palaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. Meghan Markle is reportedly gearing up for a charm offensive aimed at rebuilding her Hollywood connections this holiday season. According to an insider speaking to Closer magazine, Meghan is feeling increasingly isolated and is keen on rekindling friendships, especially as she prepares to enter 2025 on a more positive note. As part of this festive strategy, Meghan is curating luxury gift packages filled with her personal favorites, centered naturally around her signature jam from her new brand, American Riviera Orchard, which she debuted in March. The source claims she's putting a lot of thought and a hefty budget into these holiday packages, which are reportedly aimed at reconnecting with Hollywood's top influencers. While promoting her brand as part of the plan, it's also about spreading goodwill and showcasing her softer side amid her reported sense of loneliness. Royal commentator Tina Brown suggests that Meghan's upcoming brand might take cues from Gwyneth Paltrow's powerhouse wellness empire, Goop, which reportedly inspired Meghan during her The Tig days. Brown points out that while the TIG shared wellness and travel tips in a straightforward, earnest style, Goop's more audacious approach made it both sensational and highly profitable. With items like Poltro's famous The Smells Like My Vagina Candle and $550 quartz necklaces, Goop thrived on attention-grabbing products and became a $250 million brand. One can only hope that Megan titles her products as such so we don't have to spend three weeks telling you what Christmas at Sandringham is like. It seems like half the world is mad at Meghan again. This time it's because Meghan wore a black top, navy blazer and a poppy, a traditional British symbol of remembrance. The sight of Meghan wearing the poppy ahead of Remembrance Day while residing in the US has reminded some of last year's similar appearance that stirred mixed reactions among American veterans. In November of 2022, Meghan wore a poppy brooch at the opening of Navy Fitness Center in San Diego, a move that raised eyebrows as poppies aren't commonly worn in the U.S. around Veterans Day on November 11th, but rather on Memorial Day in May. Veterans Day in the States honors those who have served, but doesn't traditionally involve wearing poppies, unlike the U.K.'s Remembrance Day custom. This difference in Remembrance customs sparked criticism, with some interpreting Meghan's choice as a nod to British tradition over American, while others just deciding she's the worst person who ever lived. One social media user wondered, Meghan Markle looks like a bloody moron wearing a Royal British Legion poppy. Who told her wearing a British poppy while celebrating American veterans would be a good look? Samantha Markle has reignited her defamation lawsuit against her sister, Meghan, focusing now on claims made in the Sussex's Netflix documentary, Harry and Meghan. According to court filings obtained by Newsweek, Samantha contends that comments made in the documentary and by social media analyst Christopher Boozy defamed her by implicating her in spreading online disinformation about Meghan. GB News reports that it appears Samantha's legal team has made an embarrassing gaffe in court filings, repeatedly referring to Prince Harry as the Prince of Wales, a title that actually belongs to Prince William. This blunder is said to appear nine times in recent documents submitted to the US Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit. One section even stated, Meghan's started a production studio, Archwell Productions, with her husband, Harry, Prince of Wales. In another passage, the document notes the six-part series delved into the inner lives of Meghan and her husband, Harry, Prince of Wales. Prince Harry, whose full title is Prince Henry of Wales, has never been the Prince of Wales, a designation traditionally reserved for the heir apparent to the British throne and not some spare who is fifth in line behind his enemy and three little kids. These mistakes contrast Meghan's legal team's filings, which correctly refer to Harry as Prince Henry of Wales, in case you are further confused, Harry's name is actually Henry Charles Albert David. According to a spokesperson cited by the Daily Mail, Prince Harry's childhood nickname was part of a long-standing royal tradition. Though he was christened Henry, Diana and Charles reportedly call him Harry as a more informal moniker, a centuries-old practice among the royals. The spokesperson explained, He will, of course, be christened Henry, but afterwards he'll be Harry. There are centuries of tradition involved. Harry's formal name, Henry, was typically reserved for official announcements, such as when the late Queen Elizabeth granted her consent in 2018 for Prince Henry to marry Meghan Markle. It was also reportedly used by his parents, Charles and Diana, when he was in trouble. Prince Charles is said to have joked that Harry was only called Henry when he was being very, very naughty, highlighting even the royals have playful rules when it comes to discipline. 
Friends of Andrew told the Daily Beast this weekend they were happy for the disgraced Duke in his financial battle with the King. One said, We are thrilled for Andrew. Andrew has a cast iron lease on the property, so God knows why Charles chose to pick this battle. He has been comprehensively humiliated. It's hard to imagine anyone would have any interest in where Andrew was living if Charles Aids had not spent the past year banging on about it. He was never going to just walk away from the property. The lease is a valuable asset he intends to leave to his children, and maybe William will be glad of having Eugenie or Beatrice there in years to come. It's a great result for Andrew and Sarah. It's absurd that Charles wasn't dissuaded from launching this campaign against them in the first place. But then to continue it this year, when the king has been so ill, was frankly nuts. Palace Intrigue will be right back. Princess Anne, once referred to in a magazine as a sex bomb, has once again proven her vintage style prowess, turning heads in a gold dress she first wore 30 years ago. The Princess Royal attended a dinner hosted at the Palace of Holyrood House on behalf of Loichi House Charity. Looking timeless in an intricately woven floral patterned gold dress featuring a scalloped collar, button down bodice, and an A line silhouette, the dress is quintessentially Anne, polished, practical, and rich with history. Royal fans on social media were quick to spot that the princess first wore the dress back in 1993 at the age of 43. The gown's timeless cut and unique pattern are a testament to Princess Anne's knack for a style that transcends decades. One fan even speculated that the dress could be older than 1993, noting how it mirrors designs from the late 60s or early 70s. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, Apple, or the app of your choice. And send us a voicemail if you want. That's thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com with your comments. Don't forget you can get this show commercial-free along with hundreds of others from Calaroga Shark Media. The details are all in the show notes. And you get shows like Five Minutes of Gratitude, which has your daily affirmation and feel good thanks in this Thanksgiving season. Check it out, Five Minutes of Gratitude, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue and Good times. Mm-hmm.